Are you good? <laughs> yeah, we're good. All right, cool. Welcome back, everyone. Episode 23. I'm your host, Chris. My co-host, David. And to Luke Bryan, Craig Morgan, David Hasselhoff, Elmer Fudd, and John Jacob Astor. Happy birthday. Let's make some poor choices. Do you know who John Jacob Astor is? I know who John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt is. Okay. His name is my name too. Hey, he's some some old fuck. Yeah, what'd he do? I don't know. Let me uh you know what? And I was like, he's not gonna fucking ask. I'll just I'll just eat it. Do you think whenever he goes out the He doesn't people, go out his the, the picture was like shout. black and white. He's like uh <laughs> Even, he he went out. He, I, <laughs> <laughs> he went out and he ain't coming back. <laughs> All right, let me see what this fucker did. John Jacob Astor the Fourth, uh-huh. uh huh, July thirteenth, eighteen sixty four to April nineteen twelve. Maybe he, no, that was eighteen twelve. I was gonna say maybe he died in the war, but a couple. Well, he years celebrated off. the first Christmas and the first Fourth of July. He did that was what eighteen seventy, eighteen seventy by Her- Herman Harmon Haram uh, Haram. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, embodies the rise of New York real estate. He initially made his fortune through international commerce, but in the 1830s shifted exclusively to real estate. Mm, sounds oh, like no, he was no. in, the, in the mob or something. That sounds sketchy. This, so this, those were the dates of the fourth. I was going to say, didn't he? Wasn't he born in 1864? But the original one, um, 1763 to 1848. It he was at once the richest. One of the richest, if not the richest man in America at the time of his death. Hmm. Okay. So, so that that makes me feel like there is a chance for Jerry to die. <laughs> it's going to happen. It's just a matter of uh, when and if. <sighs> no, not if. Just when. It's just wild to me. I remember the first time I saw, I think it was a couple of years ago, that I saw him and Jimmy Johnson were the same age. And I was like, How? why does he look decent? <laughs> he looked like the Crypt Keeper. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, you, you, uh, texted me to get some information ready. I'm kind of really excited for what you had me get ready for. Uh, maybe you want to start there. Huh? I don't know if I want to start there. No. I want to, I want to start at the number 23 first. Hmm. So I'm not going to, not going to do the, uh, the like guess, guess the, however many best to wear it. I just want to know in, in your opinion across basketball, football, baseball, soccer, and hockey, who are your best? To wear number twenty three, I don't know if I could think of people off the top of my head aside from Michael. Well, I know obviously. you can't think of hockey unless you know who Bob Gainey is. Nope. Yeah, um, same. Football. Honestly, my first thought was Willis McGahee. Okay, that's not far off from what I found, and that was uh, Marshawn Lynch. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Um, and baseball. It's such a weird number. Um, nothing comes to mind. The, uh-uh. one, the one I saw was Don Mattingly. Yeah, I would never in a million years. That's a good one, but I'd never, would never, never yeah, would have got would've there. Guessed the number. No, uh-uh. And then I'm, I'm interested in your soccer. Mm. I don't know how many there are, but I saw this one, and I thought Chris probably thinks he's a douchebag. Let me, uh, let me write this down. At twenty three. Yeah. Can I get a team from me? I can look it up for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 do that. <laughs> just, I, I don't fucking know. And I would I think should he's know. a douchebag? Probably. Just because? Uh, yeah. I don't know what all he did nationwide, or worldwide, rather. President and co-owner of Inner Miami. If that helps. Uh, no. Give me his main team he played for. All right, let me find it. Bought Miami. Because most of the greats are single or... Single digit or like low. So he, I can give you years active, 91 okay. to 2013. Okay. Um, yeah, he played for so many people. I don't know who his, I just started naming off teams. How's that? You know, you know who he is though? Like yeah. you've heard of him? Yeah. Okay. He's probably one of four soccer players I've ever heard of. <laughs> give me some teams. I have Man U, 
uh, Preston, Real Madrid, Los Angeles, AC Milan, Paris, Tottenham. I like you pronouncing these names. It's funny. Did I, did um, I not do any of them right? Um, Can you say Tottenham? That, Tottenham, Real Tottenham, Madrid. It's Tottenham. Um, and what was the other one you just said? AC that Milan? Crack up? Uh, no. Um, what else did you Los say? Los Angeles? Paris? No. Man U? Oh, yeah, Paris. So, like, Paddy? Is it PSG? It says Paris SG. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, that was the last place he was, I think. Yeah. That was the last place? Yeah. He was there from, looks like, January 31st, 2013 to July 1st. If it's Odell Beckham, he wasn't number 23, or at least known for wearing 23. No, Odell was 13, but David oh, Beckham I mean, um, was David, David, apparently 23. No, no, that's not his jersey number. Well, apparently he wore it. He could have worn it, but no one knows him for wearing 23. Well, can you, That's crazy. Can you name another one? Another soccer yeah. player that wears 23? Yep. Ooh. No. Cool. So we'll stick with him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that that got me thinking about the whole Michael Jordan thing. Uh, like, is Would you say he's the greatest of greats? Uh, he's, yeah, he's on all those lists. He's number one. He's, he's the goat of the goats. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a few names to throw out there into the ring, but I think he's, what would, what yeah. would the other names be? Um, I'd say Wayne Gretzky's a name. I think we did a segment on this, right? I don't know. I we did like the top athletes of all time, but I'm just yeah. thinking like greatest um, of greats. Yeah. I think Wayne's up there. I think the Messi Ronaldo thing is up there. I thought um, you, I thought you said Pele was better than both of them. Mm, if I had to pick, I'd probably go Ronaldo. See, that that have... seems too subjective for any of them to be considered the greatest of greats. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <clears throat> Babe Ruth would be up there. Yeah, I think I think he might be the the runner up. Okay, over like Tiger. Yeah, um, I'd probably put Tiger at. I'd probably go Michael, Babe, Wayne, Tiger. Um, Phelps is in there. Yeah. If you consider swimming a sport, but that's that's really the main names that come to my mind. At least I don't I don't. Uh, it's it great of the greats. Yeah. yeah, that's that's probably what I'd have to go with. Okay, do you consider swimming a sport? Yeah, for sure. Seems like more of an activity. Well, I mean, when I go to the golf course, it's an activity. It's not a sport. <laughs> that activity is is taking twelve ounce curls. And- yeah. Just well, going golf, just golf is the, the sport, and then drinking is the activity. Yeah, so you could say swimming's the sport, and I don't think you can kicking your feet and <laughs> swinging your arms is the activity. I don't think the, I don't Taking, think the actions that make the sport a sport can be considered the activity. Yeah, definitely a sport. Mm. A thousand percent. Okay. To me, it's the same as like taking a shit. Like you could make that a sport. Yeah, you can make anything a sport. Mm. Like. You could do like spaghetti noodle toss, like who's who's spaghetti noodle will stick to the wall the longest. But is that is that a sport or is that a competition? It's a sport. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. I think uh I think we should do that. We should uh make some, some short content out of uh next time you come over we'll we'll have a spaghetti noodle sport yeah. competition even call it contest. Whatever. Yeah, sport getty. Sport getty. Sport getty. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, we could use, we could do a bunch of stuff. We could do like noodles. We could do like sliced pickles. We could do like sliced cheese. Yep. Also, you should, uh, I don't know. Have you ever seen the, get the baby to stop crying? Throw cheese on them? Yeah. Slice of cheese yeah. on their face? I'll have to, I'll have to try that one next time she's at the grocery store. I don't, I don't know if I'll get approval to, to do that. <laughs> That's like, uh, I was thinking of that one. Maybe wait till she gets a little older, I think. I think she's still a little too young yeah, for Yeah, she'll just... I don't think it'll phase her. She doesn't... The brain's not yeah, developed she, enough to be like, I'm confused right. about what's going on. Yeah, give her like uh, 18 yeah. months-ish. Okay. No, let me write and that down. Cheese, cheese, cheese face. Cheese yeah, baby yeah, yeah. at a year and a half. Just add it, yeah. add it to your calendar. <laughs> <laughs> I, always, I always think of that one, and then you ever seen the one, like how to get cats to stop jumping on the counter? Oh, is it the cucumber? No, it's like th- they put like a sheet of aluminum foil. Oh, they, that's like, land right. On it and they and like as soon as they out. touch yeah. it. I don't know. What's the cucumber one? I think they're just scared of them. Like they won't go near it. I don't know. That's if it's like right. a smell. Like they like you put it behind them and they don't know it's there. And then when they turn around, yeah. they're like, "Oh, cucumber!" I saw 
I saw one yesterday. It was like a like a video of a cat like next to like a corner, like hallway corner, and the cat was just like chilling. And someone had pushed like a huge fucking like tiger stuffed animal around the corner. And the nice. just fucking freaked out. It was great. I'll see if I can find the <laughs> clip and add it. But <laughs> I was like, that's uh it's it's really easy to get stuck in those like funny funny animal yeah. like clips and and, and then oh you're like gosh, should I be laughing at this like it's funny but kind of feel bad laughing at their feel bad demise. like I was watching one that was why cats are the best and it's like this it has like this touching music and it's like cats you know help like toddlers are grabbing onto a railing on like a balcony and they're like smacking their hands away yeah. to save them and then there was one at the end of it that was like. God, what was it? And it was like, that is not a cat doing anything but being a cat. Fuck, I can't remember what it was, but it, I, I, all of them leading up to it were like, okay, yeah, good job, cat. And then the last one was like, I don't know, it didn't fling its litter yeah. out or something. It was something really dumb. And I was like, what? well, if you find it, send yeah. it to me and we'll throw a little intermission in there and, and play it. Yeah. Unless it's not worth it. Ba- bad. St- I need to uh, know what I'm talking about before I <laughs> start talking. <laughs> well, that's. That's all right. But uh, so speaking of, we'll get back to the, the shitting being a sport. I know you've been uh, yeah. pretty eager to find out what Andy and I have been subtly, discreetly texting about. Did you want to did you want to get? Yes. Learned? Yeah, I'll get learned. It, it seems like it's um, going to be a very simple thing. It, it, but yeah, it's, you guys don't it's, talk it's about simple. I it just is. it was one of those like <laughs> random thoughts that pop into my head that. Just, you know the way my brain works. It's like, where the fuck do you come up with this stuff? But so w- when I had first, when we were first talking about it, I had told you that it's something that only 344 people have done, or it's only happened 344 times. And that was like two right, weeks ago. Right. Well, that's since changed. And now it's happened 345 times because it okay. happened on June 30th. Mm-hmm. It happened by a guy named Wyatt Langford. Do you know who that is? No. <laughs> okay. Well, it's occurred 345 times, starting with Curry Foley in 1882. Um, what did they like shit themselves no. to death? <laughs> so Wyatt Langford is a baseball player. Okay. Wait a minute. What's the first guy who did it? Uh, Curry Foley in 1882, also a baseball player. So Curry makes you shit, and you can have Wyatt Langford shits. Does Not it have to do with their name. You're over here. And it's over here. Okay. <laughs> okay. You need okay. to you need to get into left field. So mm. the thing that's happened is hitting for the cycle. Got okay. it. Okay. So the thought I had at work one day was I think my I it wasn't curry, but my stomach was acting as if I had eaten curry. So okay. uh, I was I was shitting a lot. And I think it was like my second trip to the bathroom at work. And I had to go into a different stall and there's four stalls. And I was like, okay, I got it. And I texted Andy and I was like, you know, you know, in baseball, the whole hitting for the cycle, you hit single, double, triple home run. I said, we should start doing shitting for the cycle, which is when you take a crap in mm-hmm. each of the stalls in the bathroom in one day. That's impossible. Uh, Andy's done it like three, four times in the couple months that we've been, although I think one of the bathrooms he uses has like two stalls and the other one has three. I have four. So I'm like, I couldn't tell you the last time I shit twice really? in a day. What do you eat? Yeah. Carrots. Well, I only eat oh, once well, a day. Okay. That makes sense then. <laughs> um, so I usually eat after work and I'll do like a, it's like a two meal thing. Um, so I have first meal and then I'll have second meal. Then I just let it all digest, give it a couple hours before going to bed and, have a good day. So you never go to Taco Bell then because that's what fourth meal or something. Isn't that what they, what they advertise? <laughs> no, last, that's me- last yeah. meal. <laughs> huh. Well, next time you got a, a stomach bug or you eat some Chipotle or something first thing in the morning. Well, I will to, s- try to hit. Them I all. will say next week I'm going to be in Maryland camping. Right. And dad and stepmom are big breakfast, lunch okay. and dinner people. And I mean like full. So in order for you dinners. to shit for the cycle, you're going to have to shit behind like, 90 different trees while you're there 
We're just four. Okay. Or what if I like shit on like wildlife? Is that like automatic hit for the? I think that's a misdemeanor. (laughs) (laughs) But what if I started and the animal wasn't there, and then mid the animal? I don't know. And it wasn't my. Yeah, I don't know if that's like an accomplishment for either of you. I think that's just like. Well, if it happens, I'll definitely take a picture and like. I don't know how you would how you would do that. Because if you didn't start shitting on it and you ended up shitting on it, it's probably in motion. And I don't think by the time you realized you were shitting on it, you'd be able to get your phone out in time. And you might want to practice like the angles now I because I feel like you're going to spend 10 seconds just trying to be like, I feel like if it happened and I got the picture or if it happened, I'd have to get the picture no matter what it took. Like I yeah. just, just see me running <laughs> just the pants woods. down, holding you <laughs> climbing, climbing trees. Yeah. Fucking come here, chipmunk. Like, let's go. Like climbing up the tree after him, just camera out, trying to get up with one hand. Huh. Oh, yeah. Okay. So if, if, (laughs) if shitting on wildlife was, was the sport, what animal would be the greatest accomplishment? Oh, probably like one of those like deep sea fish. Okay. Let's talk land animals. Oh, land animals. Because I think any fish would probably be. (laughs) Right. (laughs) You ever, let me, let me pause that. You ever shit in, in a body of water before? I think so. Okay. I can't remember like a time or place, but I can remember the sensation. Okay. Could have been a bathtub, to be honest with you. So I couldn't hold back. I was in Canada at the time, and we were at one of the Great Lakes. Um, what's above Michigan? What lake is that? Michigan. Lake Michigan? <laughs> no, <Okay. laughs> That would be my guess. <laughs> You're the geography whiz. That's a good, that's a good guess. Um, <laughs> and we were in London, Canada. Shout out London, Canada. Uh, um, I don't think we have listeners there. Uh, <laughs> and we were at this beach and it was just one of those like it is busting at the door. And it wasn't one of those that's like it's going to be a nice, solid mm, exit. This is going to be a mess. Yeah. Um, And I just I, we we're in the middle of the beach. There's, there's nothing around us. There's no restrooms or anything. So I just went in, went waist deep and just kind of pretended like I was swimming and let her fly and got out and. You know what? Fed the fish. So, um, <laughs> the lake's probably a little less great now. <laughs> it's just a good lake. That's right. It's brown. A bunch now. of American shit in it. Brown Lake, Michigan. Um, so I gotta, I gotta look because there's not really a lake north of Michigan. There's one west and east. So I gotta see could, where London is and yeah, there you go. Yeah, figure out where uh, where you were shitting. But if I had to pick a land animal. That would be the biggest accomplishment land, right? Not something that flies. Cause that's not, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's an air animal. Probably like a, um, like an, like some kind of monkey orangutan or something that's like quick and like is up in the trees and is swinging all the time. And it's just hard to get to like physically to shit on it. Okay. Like, I was like, thinking like a snake. Nah, you could get a snake. Just find him curled up sleeping and just, pfft. I'm not. No. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> yes. Physically possible. Yeah. No, I'm not fucking doing that. Well, if you he's, get the, if he's curled you get the up, cycle, I, if you did. Uh, all right. So, so look, looking at this map here, it looks like so London's pretty far inland. So that might that must have been a whatever is closest to there, whatever lake is closest. Well, so now we're in another predicament because London is in the middle, and there's a north and south lake of London. Do you know if you went north or south? I want to say south. All right. So that's Lake Erie. Okay. If you went north, that's Huron. It was an awesome beach. Like there was actually waves breaking. There was like whitish sand. Hmm. Like you wouldn't think you were at a lake. It felt like the ocean were there. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I got you. How old were you? Oh, probably. Mm, see that? Probably fifteen ish. So you knew what you were doing. Oh yeah, and it was doing regardless. We were up there for the World Lacrosse Championship. In Canada? London, Canada. Ontario, I think it's in. Yeah. The Major League Lacrosse said uh, we couldn't get the funding for London, England. <laughs> so uh, we're going we're gonna to do London, Canada. London, Canada. That was it. It was a great time, except for having shit my britches in the ocean or the lake. But hey. Well, where are your britches then? They were just <laughs> fishes. Yeah. Fish, <laughs> shit in your fishes. Huh. Well, that's a. That's a good transition. Uh, I have an abundance of sports-related 
records and feats and impossible and this and that. Hmm. So That's weird you- because I have here um, the most unbreakable records in sports. <clears throat> Well, we could we could compare lists, but before we get into that, let's uh let's let's do the feats since okay sh- since uh shitting on certain land animals would be a feat a feat yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How, however, it'd be on their feet, right? Right. Well, hopefully, you wouldn't get it on your feet. <laughs> so I have. Wish I could say that's never happened. Okay. I don't think I've ever shit on my feet. Well, it ran down my leg and into my sock, and it was in the middle of a into uh, your sock. Yeah. So middle of a basketball game um i was probably like in kindergarten maybe first (laughs) maybe no let me tell you this story okay Um, maybe first grade give or take i was on the saint john's green terror that was our team um church league and obviously i'd had stomach issues going into the game and yeah stomach issues were probably (laughs) called green terror (laughs) our our uniforms were um it was a a green top with the like bright yellow shorts this is like early mid-90s um and it started going down my leg while i was playing like on the court um and my mom just ran out onto the court and scooped me up in the middle of the game and we ran out <laughs> T- to the bathroom or home <laughs> i couldn't tell you um but i know the next game i wore a pair of sweatpants on underneath my shorts and uh just to be safe or practice i did that or something along those lines um no yeah that's her fi- one of her favorite stories hmm. to tell me it's it's a great one and you didn't you didn't get like a nickname out of that no, I think I was too young. Like I said, it was like kindergarten, first grade, maybe second grade at the most. Mm. I figured your your friends would have given you something. Well, it was a church league. I, most of my friends actually uh, didn't. Thou shalt not shit his pants while playing basketball. Yeah, I like n- almost none of my friends went to that church. Like I had friends there, but like yeah, that more like acquaintances. Friends. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I know your uh, church more like your apostles, I guess. Yeah, hey. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I have uh, I have the most impressive achievements in sports. I have 12 of the hardest athletic feats to pull off. I have most difficult things to do in sports. And the other ones are records. So out of those three, which one do you want me to roll with? What was the hardest to do in sports? Things that are hardest to do. All right, so I have 12 of the hardest athletic feats to pull off, according to science and statistics. I know the hardest one. What is it? It's got to be Wade Boggs drinking like 50 beers. <laughs> I don't know if they consider that an <laughs> athletic feat. On a, on a cross-country flight and then just pounding out like a three for four game. So how many did he do? Uh, I don't know what the actual rumor is. I think it's like 50 something. Okay, because I saw this the other day. Uh, Andre the Giant is rumored to have drank 156 beers in one sitting. Jesus Christ. Uh, Wade, 73, confirms he drank 30, 73 beers on one flight, and then it went to 107 as the rumor. So 73 in a flight. So who spoke of that rumor? Like, where'd that rumor come um, from? Well, it's not a rumor. He... Wade Boggs confirms he drinks 73 beers on one flight. Well, uh, self-proclaimed, that's, we need eyewitnesses. Mm, I guess his team? Mm. Okay. I don't know. Because there was uh, two fellow wrestlers confirmed, uh, says, during the Legends of Wrestling series, wrestler Mike Graham spoke of how Andre once drank 156 beers in one sitting, which fellow wrestlers Dusty Rhodes and Michael Hayes confirmed. What about Doc Ellis? Was on LSD and threw a perfect game. I, yeah, I heard about that. Mm-hmm. Again, about I don't that? know that the well. That's more of a athletic feat, but I don't know if the beers okay. are. I'm gonna I'm okay. gonna categorize that with the uh, activities. Okay. Well, hit me with your list. All right. Before so we get the, too sidetracked. The first, I don't know if these are ranked in any specific order. I don't okay. believe so. Um, but the first one it lists is 815 pitching starts by Cy Young. That's a, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one I had to do some research on because I didn't know it was possible. But uh, five strikeouts in a single inning, and five sounds, players have done that in college baseball. Sounds um, like any more details? How? So I guess if you throw strike three and it's dropped, and they make it to first. Oh my gosh! It's wow. still a strikeout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's happened five times. 
Damn, so somebody did that in the same inning twice. Yes. Five. Wow. Five. I think it said five people have done it. That's wild. And this Damn. one, this one is, I, I feel like, even more incredible. It's only happened once. It was Fernando okay. Tatis in 1999. Mm-hmm. Two grand slams in the same inning off the same Oof. pitcher. Oof. I mean, after, come on, you got to get him out of there. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know how you let <laughs> one make it around the batting order. Uh, I don't yeah, and two, uh, the same guy who already hit a grand slam on me. Let me pitch to him again. Yeah, like he's up with the bases loaded. We walk his ass. Unless that first grand slam made it like sixteen to nothing, they were like, "Who? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're yeah, not going to waste the pitchers." Right. Like, mm-hmm. The next one is a one point safety. It's happened three times in college football. Is that when they return? No, because that's or? that's two points. So one point safety is if the defense, um, like blocks an extra point and gets tackled in their own end zone. Oh, after starting outside of it. Right. Bizarre. Okay. Yeah. The next one is throwing a no-hitter at 44 years old, which was Nolan Ryan. Absolutely. It was the Rocket. No. Yeah. Was he the Rocket? No, it's no. Roger. That's right. Ro- no. Yeah. He was the, what was he? He was something. Mm, you got it. You're on it. He was the Ryan Express. <laughs> What? <laughs> what a shitty nickname. I thought it was something way cooler than that. <laughs> that can't be the only one. It is. That's the almost, Ryan Express. That's almost as bad as Willie Parker's nickname. Like the Steelers running back, Willie Parker? Yeah. Do you remember his nickname? No. It was Fast Willie Parker. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So the next one is uh, a quadruple double in basketball. Four players have done it. Whoa. Okay. Uh, the next one is pitch a perfect game, which has happened 23 times. Yeah. And one on drugs. Okay. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> no, he admitted. Well, he admitted, but yeah, I yeah, could say too- that I've been going to work on LSD for the past six months. And it was also the 60s. So I believe it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Or the 70s or something like that. Yeah. So the next one is just hitting a baseball. Which I know is from a physical standpoint one of I was gonna say I've done that once or twice. Well, I think it like in hitting a, a MLB pitch. Oh, absolutely not. But I don't like compared to everything else on this list, I don't think it really Yeah. Yeah. So the next one is very impressive back to back to the Wayne Gretzky. Uh in the NHL score two hundred points in a season. The only person to ever do it is Gretzky. And he did yeah. it and he did it four times. He did, and he's that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Mr. Ovi of the Capitals is 99% going to break, 99% sure he's going to break his all-time goals record. You think so? If you weren't aware, do you know how close he is? He's not even second, I know that. Ovi? Yeah, because the list I looked at, I think, was from last year. Let's find out. He is super close. He's at 853. Yep. And 894 is the record. He's he's in, he's going to break it. Okay, maybe I was looking at points. Yeah, no one's going to break that. Okay. Um, but career goals, he is definitely going to break it. He only needs, what, 41 more goals? He'll play for three more years and do it. I know he's old as shit, but he's going to do it. I heard... Uh, That's the only reason he's playing. Yeah, it's got to be. I heard he takes shots of vodka, like, in between periods. I feel like he has to. He's, like that's, he's, that's the only way he's operating. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thousand percent. All right. I got three more. Mm-hmm. The next one. The next one is getting a Condor score. Oh, that's huge. Any idea? So that's getting how a many two. That's getting it. a two on a par five. No, that's getting a one oh, on a par a five. One on that's a par acing five. a par five. Yeah. Wait. So what's it? That's a Condor. So what's a two on a par five? That's an Albatross. Oh, I've a trough. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm the golfer. Fuck. I know. You taught me that. What the fuck? <laughs> um, yeah, I've gotten a condor on Wii. Wii Golf. Does that count? Uh, or it might have been Mario Golf. It might count for you, but you're not part of the amount of this number. Do you want to take a guess on how many that is? Two. Six. Six. Okay. What Man. about a perfect game in Wii Bowling? I, I feel like a lot of people have done it, but... I know that was the other list I had. Bowling a perfect game was listed on there as the most one of the most oppressive achievements. 
I did it. We were doing a, a case race with Budweiser, and I I did it. Okay, that's all I got. This one's not really a. Uh, I guess it is hard, but it's it's three bunts in a row. So I guess three successful, but it's it wasn't By all the, the same, same player. No, it just I think three batters in a row. In a row. What I feel like after the second one, the infield's just got to be <laughs> standing right in front of home plate. Like I, I gotcha. I don't, I don't know. I gotcha. So this. This was the Diamondbacks in 2015, and okay. attached to that, there was this Negro League stat yeah. that said uh, the team came back from like a 19 point deficit or something, and they, well, were, they just they were they already just changed it so that Negro yeah, League stats are now part of. But I don't think this so like consecutive bunts wasn't like a record kept stat. Sure. So this sure. was just like a word of mouth thing. So the, this team came back from like a 19 point deficit or a 19 run deficit, and it wasn't all on bunts. But I guess when they were starting to get close, they they bunted 11 times in a row. Oh my god! Like at that point, you're like, how do you? That's horrible. Do you defense. remember that feeling as a kid? And you look down at your third base coach, and he's like, I want you to bunt, and you're like, Coach. Yeah, Coach Joe. He it was always the the designator was the elbow, and then the ear was bunt. And, I was like, and he would do Come it, on, coach. And he would do it, and I would stay my ass outside the batter's box, and I'd be like, "You want to try that again?" <laughs> because I'm not. I'm like the fattest kid on this fucking team. I'm not. Bunting. See, and I got it all the fucking time because I swung left-handed. Yeah, so you're a little bit closer to first, and, and you're short and quick. Yeah, I was short and quick, and it was. Yeah, God, I hated it. It was, was like, the worst feeling, Coach Joe. If you ever listen to this, fuck you for that. Fuck you. <laughs> I don't think I ever listened, but I always got yelled at afterwards. I'm like, yeah, dude, I Coach fucking, Joe. I ain't fuck you. Fuck that. I ain't button. Son of a bitch. And the last one, I have one other to go into after this. That's a whole other thing. But the last one I have for this list is finishing an NFL game with a perfect 158.3 passer rating. Okay. Yeah. Out of the, it said over 30,000 chances that quarterbacks have had, it's happened 57 times. I was going to guess like in the 30s, but that's okay. 57 57 okay. so that goes into this while i was trying to look at all this stuff i found this article from this dude and it said this is the the rarest achievement in sports rarest achievement okay go ahead do you have any guess as to what it could be rarest achievement Did, uh, winning a championship with a team in every major sport or with two teams no i don't or? i think that's like a zero um so it's the rarest then it has to do with <laughs> it has to it has to do with college and pro um winning back to back titles with your college team and with your pro team no nope, but you're kind of close okay good so I'm not I'll, sure I'll just give it to you during the last 125 years over 5 million men have played college football more than 25,000 of them have gone on to the pros however only 10 have accomplished what might be the rarest achievement in the history of sport, winning the Heisman Trophy and being enshrined into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah. It's so funny how winning the Heisman doesn't translate into a great career because you would think the best player in college football is now entering pro football. Right. You think there'd be Gu- a, there'd guaranteed. a better chance than that. Yeah. It's so, wild. It's wild. I want you to try to see if you can guess any of them that have done it, and then I'm going to give you statistics of other things that have happened. How many of them? That's happened. Uh, Ten. Oh God. Um, You've heard of? Yeah, I don't know a lot of Heisman winners off the top of my head. All right, I'll just give them to you. Mark Ingram. I don't think he's even eligible yet. Oh, Hall of Fame, not Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Joe Montana. Nope. Steve Young. Nope. Brett Favre. Nope. So the only there is a quarterback on here you'll know. He was a cowboy. Um, that's probably it's got to be Ben DiNucci. Beat Army. Never heard of him. No, that's, that's <laughs> <laughs> Go Navy Beat yeah, Army. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any idea? Uh, Went to the Naval Academy. Uh, James Franco. It's Roger Stallback. Mm, didn't know he went there. <laughs> The other ones are Marcus Allen, Tim Brown, Earl Campbell, Tony Dorsett, Barry Sanders, Paul Horning, Doak Walker, and the most recent Charles Woodson. Mm, okay. Wouldn't have in a million years gotten any of those. <laughs> so more people have gone over Niagara Falls and lived than have done that. Shit. 
there's been more Major League Baseball players that hit 500 home runs than to do that. Damn. In more than 100 years of tournament play, the PGA Tour has had more golfers win three major championships than have done that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In 148 years of horse racing at the Kentucky Derby, Belmont Stakes, and Preakness, there have been more Triple Crown winners than that. See, that's wild because that first Triple Crown happened, what, a few years ago? A couple years ago? And it was the first time in like 50 years or something like that? That's wild. Must have been a bunch back in the day. In 238 years, there have been more men elected president of the United States twice than have done that. A lot of, a lot of uh, so it's not common. Uh, there's a couple more. Uh, so it, back, to, back to the cycle. In Major League Baseball, more players have hit for the natural cycle than have done that. Okay. Which is, do uh, you know what the natural cycle is? Hitting a single then a double, then a triple, then a home run. Yeah, doing it all in order. Mm-hmm. Uh, more than 129,000 games have been played in the NBA, and more players have scored 60 points in a game than have done that. <laughs> and then, it, then it gets wild. More recording artists have sold more than 200 million albums than have done that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the last one, more members of America's Armed Forces have won the Medal of Honor twice than have done that. Twice, huh? I feel like they need to come up with a new highest uh achievement yeah like you got the medal of honor now you get the medal of fucking metallica Val- da, na, 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 na. Uh, medal of metallica yeah that'd be sweet that's that, that's like, a, like metal and yeah, yeah that's like redundant now because metallic metal and then it has a little button on it when you press it it goes dun, 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 na, na, it goes na, na, like na, seek na, and destroy yeah. yeah yeah oh that's good yeah yeah, yeah. Because that's what they did over there. Hell yeah. What did Hell you yeah. do for the military? You press the button, they're like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I think I'm going to get away from the records. I think I got something else instead. All right. Um, so, all these uh, sports record talks and, and records and all this craziness, just to stay in the sports realm, I, I wanted to, you know, all these players breaking all these records and holding all this stuff. They're all wearing jerseys, right? They're all in uniform. So, I wanted to get your idea of like coolest jerseys. And then I wanted to give you a list of a rank. I have a top 10 ranked coolest jerseys of all time to date and see if any of yours fall in line with the top 10. Uh, I don't know if I know enough different jerseys across all sports. Um, Between basketball, soccer, hockey, baseball, football, college and NFL. And that's about it. Hmm. Well, you know my favorite, right? Your favorite is, is it Carolina's? Yeah. Carolina blue one? I like that one. I like the Seahawks all green. That neon highlighter green? Yeah. Um, what about basketball? I think it's the, is it the Timberwolves? Let me see. It's they have not. a really, what, you're asking for mine. Oh, yours. <laughs> yeah, that's not it. <laughs> that's not mine. No, that's not yours. <laughs> Let me see if that's the one I'm thinking of. Uh, no, no, it's. I think it's the Grizzlies. Okay, is that allowed to be mine? Yeah, that's okay. okay yeah, <laughs> yeah. The Grizzlies is cool. Is this like uh, the the best in each or the coolest in each sport? Or nope, it's just a rank of. Um, there's actually two from one team on this list. What sport? Uh, college football. Yeah, there's like. <sighs> Like 700 college football teams. And number one is also college football, and I've never seen it, and it is such a badass-looking jersey. Who is it? I can't. Th- we're not there yet. Uh, well, I don't. You're asking for mine. How about baseball? Like, if you were, like, non-biased, like, uh, you, you probably haven't seen many recent baseball jerseys. Yeah, so I'd be biased. Um, well, let me start from the 10 on the list, which is NBA, and it's the Raptors 90s um, dino. Jersey. Yeah. Throwback which, one. Really cool. Um, nine is also basketball. I've never seen this before. It's the Clippers had a sleeved alternate jersey in 2014. I don't like sleeved basketball jerseys. It looks like it, like they're wearing like a soccer jersey. It's weird. Um, it's cool. It's like a baby powder blue with Los Angeles across the front and white with red outline. I mean, it looks good, but I just, nah. Hmm. I could have picked a better jersey. Um, same with number eight. It's the Can- Canadians breakaway home jersey but it's just their ugh, 
it's not even close to making my top 100. Like, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. Um, seven, I do like a lot, which is the Brewers' current alternate away jersey slash mixed with the hat that they have. It looks nice. really good. Uh, is it the one that says Brew Crew? No, it says Milwaukee in yellow on a blue jersey. And then the okay. hat in the front is yellow with a blue brim. Uh, yeah, so more more so than that, I'm going with their... I'm about to buy one of these. What, their, their City, C- Connect. City Connect? Yeah. yeah. There's some cool City Connect jerseys out there. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. Uh, six, I think you're going to like a lot, which okay. is North Carolina's 1990s retro for football. UNC 90s retro football jersey and helmet. retro football. Really good looking. Fuck. I got to learn how to spell football. Uh, just the Carolina blue? It is. Oh, but it, the, the light. This one here, the light one. Yeah, I'm going to... Um, send you the link to this site so you can use them or see them yeah yeah i like that one that's cool i don't um, like the capital one patch but yeah you know yeah. well the one i'm looking at doesn't have that it just says acc okay oh you're looking at a bowl jersey then they wear it a bowl oh, capital, okay capital one bowl um five might be one of my favorite nfl jerseys and that's the chargers royal blue color rush yeah that's a good one I like it's that one too. so good so good um Four is Ur- Oregon's breast cancer awareness jersey, which is it's okay. Is that is that cooler than their normal one? Because I like well, the normal one. They're just wait. Um, three is a really good one. It's basketball. Miami Heat's Vice Wave. <sighs> yeah, I'm not. I love those it. are those are cool. I just I'm not a fan of that combo. I love like that it's, combo. I, I like it, but it just it's not visu- as visually pleasing to me. That's I like my, this Oregon breast cancer one. That's cool. Um, number two is also Oregon, which is the Ohana alternate jersey. And then number one, Boston College red bandana. Oh, my oh, God. Look at these Ohana. Yeah, that Ohana is cool. You said red bandana? Boston College red bandana jersey from 2020. It is so sweet looking. Like, if you told me Boston College is number one on this list, I'd be like, Why? And then I saw this jersey, and I was like, oh, it's just, my God. It's just white with print numbers. With the bandana in it. Go to the link I sent you. I haven't got it yet. It's sent. Oh, no, it no, didn't. No, it's the Who did I send that to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get it, but uh, no. I, I'd, I'd put that top 10 uh, jersey numbers, but no, it's a, it's a white jersey. I think my favorite out of all these is probably the Ducks Ohana. Yeah, that's a cool one. That's really nice. I'd like to see something like that, but with like a like snakeskin print. I think that would be Ooh, cool. Oh, yeah. Well, that one kind of sort of is. It, it like wants to be, but like just like going with scale the scale look across mm-hmm. the whole thing. Oregon might be just, God, they know how to do it. Every time yeah. they're on the field, I'm like, God, what a sweet jersey. What a sweet helmet. Right. The fact that they have Nike's headquarters there and they pay for everything is pretty sweet deal. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's, that's, uh, but did you see that Canadians one? How is that on the top 10 list? Oh, let me pull it back up on number eight. How is that even? <laughs> Why? How Don't they wear that all the time? It just, it looks like I'm watching a game from 1984. What's and... different between that and their new jerseys, man. Uh, how, how did that make the list? You got me. I got yeah, it's weird. It's so weird. Interesting. Hi, everyone. I just wanted to take a second to ask that you all hit those like and subscribe buttons. Or if you're an audio listener, go ahead and give the guys five stars. Thanks for listening. Now back to the Poor Choices show. How about, can you name any of the top selling jerseys of all time? Uh, all time? Uh, yeah. Some of those played forever. Jordan. He is a number... One, probably Tom. Tom is number five. Probably some soccer shit. Uh, there's Mess- Messi. Messi's number two, and number three is also soccer. Uh, the other one, Ronaldo. Yeah. Yep. Eight is also soccer. You'll never get that one. Nope. Not even gonna try. That's a uh, Neymar. Uh, LeBron, Kobe. LeBron is four. Kobe seven. So you're missing six, nine, and ten. What sports? Six is baseball. Nine is hockey. Ten is football. Current or recent baseball? Um, Semi-recent. He retired a few years ago. Ichiro. No, that's a good guess, though. 
but he's American. Played for the biggest team in baseball, one would argue. A Rod? No. Derek? Derek. Okay. Um, and then nine is hockey. And Wayne? ten is not Wayne. Crosby. Yep. Uh huh. Sure is. And number ten is a piece of shit asshole. Crybaby, son of a bitch. Colin Kaepernick. No. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's they're equal in that sense. Um well, I already said Tom, mm-hmm. who is a son of a bitch crybaby asshole. Yeah, he's the new Tom. A little immature, a little crybaby. Oh, there's so many of them. Antonio? No, nah, he's a quarterback. Two-time Super Bowl winner. Two-time MVP. Mahomes is three-time, right? Oh, yeah. Well, it's him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You're funny. You're funny. We'll have to have a, a Mahomes episode. Now I'll quit. <laughs> if we talk about my homes or taylor swift i quit <laughs> uh and there's it's so funny how like together they are in that whole just sphere yeah i don't think about them so they're really far apart <laughs> <laughs> uh well i, I still got a, a a decent handful of stuff uh you want to take a little break um, and and talk about what you're drinking yeah um so i touched on it earlier I don't know if it's going to make the episode, but it's a beer. Oh, beer, a hundred and forty some beers. What? I just that we touched on that earlier. Just the plethora oh, oh, of oh, beers. Oh, 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 oh. Um, it's a beer I've had in the past once, and I texted you. I was like, David, you ever had this beer? I'm up in Maryland. It's really good. You're like, yeah, that's that's a great beer. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, like, how have you not heard of this beer? Does that ring any bells? Yes, but don't remember the beer. Okay, so. Brought to you by, before I reveal it, this is by Golden Road Brewing out of L.A. and St. Louis. Is a little little mango cart. Huh. And I've only had it that one time, and this is my second time having it. It's definitely very good. It's super refreshing. It's very it light. It's very good. Um, But it's not something I would be like, oh, mango cart. I'm going to get that. I think I got it because it was... Like that or Miller. And I was like, yeah, let me try that. <laughs> let me try that mango. Um, but it's solid. I'd probably give it uh, like an eight, uh, three, eight, three. Okay. Cause it's kind of light. So you need a lot of them, but it's very tasty. It's very good. Hmm. That's like my, it's like my shock top alternative. Yeah. It's got the flavor, but it's not like crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's good. So are they like, the Rams of beer. In what sense? You said they're out of L.A. and St. Louis. Oh, snap. That's really mm. good. Damn, that's really good. You just thought of that? Yeah. You said that. I was like, that's that's odd. But wait, so are the Rams. Huh. Hmm. 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 Well, I How think I'm going <laughs> to I think I'm going to stick in the same realm. I think I'm at like a eight one with it's a. It's called Strawberry Blonde Ambition uh-huh. by Sun Creek Brewery. It's a light and crisp filtered blonde ale treated with strawberries and Belma hops for a refreshing fruit finish. Do you think that's what Eric has when he's like, he wants to do something? He has Strawberry Blonde Ambition? No, I think he just like does like straight ginger root or something. Ooh, like like gin- he, ginger he beer. He it up and snorts that shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm trying to get fucked up tonight. But yeah, I think I'll go like an eight one. It's also on the. Uh, you said it, it. It is a sour. No, no, no. It's just a a blonde ale. A blonde ale. Okay. Um, it's on the light, refreshing side, but it is flavorful, tasty. Mm-hmm. I like it. It's good. Okay. Very good. Very good. Yeah. 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 I think I want to do a. Um, I'll try. I'm going to try my best. I'm going to try and do like a snorkel. Just, no, a um. God no. <laughs> Um, like when I'm up there next week during the camping trip, cause it's really just drinking and then we sleep in the woods, um, <laughs> instead of in a okay. bed. Sounds um, like camping. I want to try to do like a, every time I get a drink, I'm just going to take a picture of it in my hand and like see a new drink or how many drinks, a new drink. Every time I crack a beer, I go, we go so out same to the beer, like yes. same type of beer. Okay. Yeah. So just yes. every drink. Yeah. I'm going to try. It's not, it's not going to work. Maybe I'll try every time it's a new drink then. Like I had this and then I had this and I had yeah, this. And that, I, and that might work. That might I'm work just a little th- better. I'm just thinking back to the uh, 
yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to do all these like, you know, POV interviews at your wedding. And you're like, ah, I, just, I forgot. <laughs> so to be, to be you're going to, you're going to take like three pictures of beer. I didn't forget. And then, I just worked up such a healthy buzz that by the time music started playing, I couldn't not go dance. Yeah. Well, that's the same thing's going to happen. You're going to take pictures of three beers and then be like, ah, I, just, I ain't going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try. Every time I try a new drink, I'm going to okay. try. Well, I don't have faith. So there's, start, there's that. <laughs> I'll start with my one at the airport because I always got to have my pre, my pee, pre, pre plane beer. Your PPB? Mm hmm. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, before we jump into the other stuff, I'll move. We'll we'll dive into what you were excited for. Yeah, let's do it. So I know it's been what what episode are we on? Twenty three. Mm hmm. It's been like I don't know eighteen episodes since we've done this. <laughs> but we're going to talk about how some more NFL teams got their names. Okay. All right. So this week, maybe we could turn this into like a weekly thing too. I know the. Uh, you said that when you started it, and then yeah, we didn't no, I mean, finish. I know it. the I know the divisions <laughs> thing was supposed to be a weekly thing, but the the subsequent, I think we should turn into a thing. Yeah, I like it. Drafting. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So this week we're gonna do the AFC West, how they got their name. Okay. Um, before I read any, do you know any of them? Um, if I had to guess, Broncos because they're out in ranch country and you know horses and shit. Okay. Um. Chiefs, I would guess, because of a tribe from that area. I don't know what tribe specifically, but that would be my guess. Okay. Um, the Chargers, probably from all the lightning in the area. A lot of storms. I don't know. Okay. Um, and the Raiders. Um, I got nothing. They were, where, where are they originally from? The Raiders. Uh, I think LA. LA. Maybe they had some some of those Somali pirates get all the way over there on their dinghies and. Uh, How close is Somalia to California? Not very. Okay, so that that'd, that'd be a fucking crazy boat ride. <laughs> <laughs> like that I might. Am the, I am the coach now. <laughs> that might be one of the farthest points away from Somalia is yeah. California. <laughs> <laughs> like they'd either have to go all the way around the globe or go through like the panama canal and then go up it'd be ridiculous yeah huh yeah. uh-huh okay well you were kind of close to one of them broncos yes yeah kind of so we'll start there so the the broncos name was selected out of a statewide contest by bob Housem, the original owner of the franchise uh eight entrants submitted the name but ward vining of lakewood was declared the official winner of the contest based on his 25-word essay explaining why it would best fit a football team based in Denver. I just need why. I don't care about Bert Venford. Well, <laughs> that it was part of the why because <laughs> eight eight entrants submitted Broncos, but they declared him the winner because of his 25-word essay explaining why it would be the best fit. So they uh, they, okay. they asked the the owner what the essay said. And he said, I don't remember exactly what he wrote. But then they asked his daughter, and his daughter said he wrote that Bronco he wrote that Broncos were tough and typified the West. Ford so. is a great company. Okay. Um Well, uh <laughs> OJ felt the same way. Yeah, it was white. Oh yeah. It was it was white. He wasn't white. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, Chiefs, I'm curious because yeah, I figured so Chiefs, it's it's funny that you said what you did because it's the the story We'll tell you why. So in 1963, the Dallas Texans AFL team was renamed to the Chiefs in honor of Kansas City Mayor Harold Rowe Bartle, who was instrumental in re- relocating the team to Kansas City. Bartle, a non-native, had been nicknamed Chief as a founder of the tribe of Mikose, a Boy Scouts honor camping society. <laughs> so not, not native whatsoever. But had the nickname Chief. So that's why they haven't been canceled yet. The Boy Scouts are the, the Chiefs. Chiefs. And they yeah. can still oh, do the yeah, chop. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. All right. Which one you want next? Mm, charges. All right. So the Chargers, while reading fan letters with name suggestions, general manager Flank, Frank Leahy. Opened, It'd been way cooler if his name was Flank. <laughs> Flank Leahy. Uh-huh. General Manager Frank Leahy opened one of 
opened one with the suggested name Chargers and liked it so much he didn't open another letter. When presented with the name, owner Baron Hilton agreed and said he liked it because he liked when the crowds at the Dodgers and Trojans games would yell charge at the sounding of the bugle. Oh, nice. Okay. So, and then last but not least, oh, this one's so funny. The Raiders. The Oakland Raiders were originally going to be called the Oakland Seniors after <laughs> a name the team contest had that name finished first. But after being the target of local jokes, the name was changed to the Raiders before the 1960 season. With enough backlash, the owner decided that the team name, that the team would go with another name, the Raiders. So in less than 10 days after initially being named the Seniors, they became the Raiders. And the Raiders was another one of the finalist names. Oh, okay. But so Seniors won, but they it was they got so made fun of in ten days that they were like, nah. I'm trying to imagine what that like logo would be. I just picture the same logo except instead of a helmet, it's like a sombrero. And yeah. instead of a sword in their mouth, it's like it's a-, a cigar, like a Cuban <laughs> cigar. <laughs> Senor, yeah, senor. <laughs> I want to tell you something. As, instead of the eye, instead of the eye patch, he's like winking. <laughs> I'm trying to picture Chris Berman so going the Raiders. He's going <laughs> the senors, <laughs> the senors. <laughs> but that would be cool. That like then then their cheerleaders could be like the senoritas. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, not not worth. I was gonna say that's the only thing yeah. that'd be good out of yeah. it. Yeah, the name of the cheerleaders. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The coach would be like, I don't know what El Chulo means, but that sounds like that would be what he's called. I don't know. Chulo. Do you remember what they used to call me at that place we worked together at? All the Hispanics would call me. Uh, you told me, but no, I don't remember. You remember what they called me? No. Chicharito. Chicharito. Uh-huh. What does that mean? Little P. <laughs> <laughs> he's also a, a soccer player from back in, well, not back in the day, but maybe 15-ish years ago. I, it read? would it would have been back in the day, and then you were like, "It was no, like 2010." That, that, that would make me sound old, so I'm <laughs> yeah. not going to say that. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Okay. Well, uh, so this is what we're gonna what we're gonna do each week with our how we got their names. He says gonna, that, but we'll see. We're yeah. I'm gonna try my best. We're gonna take that division, and we're gonna build the best team we can. All right. So we're gonna draft the all time best AFC West team. Got to choose a quarterback running back, receiver, and tight end. Okay. All right, so we have to select at least one player from each team in the division, and we can't choose a player the other person has already chose. Correct. So four players, each one from a different team, to fill each position. Correct, and you don't have to draft in any particular order, team, position, whatsoever. Cool. All right, let's do it. I'm so ready. All right. Um. Well, I... I'd be a, I think I'd be a fool not to to go ahead and take Peyton at quarterback. Okay. I think I kind of was going to go that same route if I didn't get the first pick, so that's a great pick. You're a fool if you didn't. Um, so my number one, I'm going to go with Ladanian Tomlinson as my number one pick for the charges. Okay. In that case, I think with my pick, I'm going to take... Who do I want to take? Mm-hmm. Oh, I had this all written out, and now I don't know mm-hmm. what I want to do. Uh, I can do that. Oh, shit. Wait. Oh, fuck. Mm-hmm. I'm so ready. I accidentally wrote two Broncos down. Hmm. Oh, I have, like, multiple from each team for each position. Yeah. What position are you going for? Well, I was going for a position based on... The other running back I had selected, but it was Terrell Davis. <laughs> and I can't, I can't, can't do that. Can't do that. There's another one you could definitely take. There's two you could definitely take. Yeah, I know the one I want to do. Um, okay, so you took LT? Oh, yeah. So big I, time. I can go that. I can do that. Okay. All right. I think with, with my second pick, I'm going to take Tyreek at receiver. Cool. I'm... I'm cool with that. Um, so your chief is gone and your Bronco is gone, huh? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go with at number two, John Elway at quarterback. You would have been so much better served with uh, that crybaby bitch. 
I don't care about people watching this. <laughs> I ain't drafting that that punk ass pussy. No way. Uh, okay. Um, with my third pick, I'm going to take Marcus Allen at running back. Mm-hmm. I think that is the wise decision. Um, my third pick is going to be tight end. I'm going Tony Gonzalez. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna match you there, and with my tight end pick, I'm gonna take Antonio Gates over Kellen. Really? Yeah. Statistically, okay. I think okay. that's the better choice. And my number four is uh, it's got to be a receiver for the Raiders, and <sighs> it's only one. Don't so, don't well, don't. Uh, I'm do do the do the smart one, not the stretch one. All right, I'm gonna go with Tim Brown. There you go. <laughs> I, I had it's funny in my notes. I have Tim Brown or Randy with this emoji. <laughs> <laughs> so I was I was thinking you were gonna go Jerry because I I was no, like no, I was no, like no. I, I let me see if this fool tries this and I, no. and I so I grabbed Jerry's stats as a Raider and in 54 games he had 18 touchdowns and averaged 60 yards a game. I would have gone Randy over Jerry, um, but I'm going Tim Brown. Got to, dude. I, I think I think Randy played more games than routes he ran <laughs> in Oakland. Dude, I, I remember seeing videos of when like what was it Jamarcus was his quarterback, just like him like walking off the line of scrimmage. Yeah, just yeah. like I mean I don't blame him. Why but, am I here? Yeah. So um, to recap, you had Peyton Marcus. Antonio and Tyreek. Yes. Versus LT, Elway, Tony G, and Tim Brown. Who do you like better, non biased, if you just looked at those lined up? Um I'm like They're 50, pretty close. I'm fifty five me, forty five you. And I think it's if it was anybody other than Peyton, I think I'd I'd give you the win. Mm. I think Peyton's just my my toppler. Because I like Tony G over Antonio. Yeah, I do too. I also like LT over Marcus. Yeah. But I like Tyreek over but Tim. Not, I don't Yeah. And I like Peyton over John. Yeah, but my my Peyton over John is like so so much of a discrepancy over the other ones that you're over me. But that mm. I don't know, that that could be bias. I don't know. We'll see. Well, so I also had I had Marcus Allen, I had Terrell <laughs> Davis. And then I had Priest Holmes as my chief. Yeah, I had, um, I had Priest on there. I had Elway, Peyton. I did write my homes, but there was no way I was going to pick him. I just needed somebody from the team. And then I had Drew Brees for my charger. Uh, I didn't even. No? No, nah, because I told you, I was thinking more like tenure. Yeah, I mean, he was drafted by him and, you know. Like he did, he played, what, a season or two there? Mm-hmm. And then I had Antonio and Kellen. And then I had Tony G and Shannon Sharp. And then yeah, I had. Well. Tyreek, Tim Brown. Um, I didn't have a charger. I had Rod Smith as my Bronco. For receiver? receiver? Mm-hmm. I had Lan- Lance Allworth. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was um, good. I like that. I can't wait to do another division. Yeah, I had I had Rod Smith and Ed McCaffrey. Old Ed. Um, I had Rivers. And if I'd, not that it ever would have came to it, but I had Ken Stabler as a, a Raiders quarterback. Mm. Uh, yeah, Gates, Winslow, Darren Waller, and Dave Casper. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then I had uh, Kelsey and Tony G in case I was stuck at tight end with that. But You know who drafted Darren Waller? Um, And he played for them his rookie year. I don't know about his second year, but... He's been so many places, I'm trying to think of when he was where. I know he was a giant. Yep. Is that who drafted him? No. No. He was a Baltimore Raven. Interesting. Right? Right. Uh, Lance Allworth was uh, a cowboy for two seasons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shit. Fun fact. Okay. All right. To to stick with the theme, mm-hmm. I want you to blind rank these fictional athletes. Ooh. Okay. Let's do it. The first one is going to be Bobby Boucher. <laughs> B- Bobby Boucher. Shouldn't spit, 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 spit in the c- 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 cooler. Uh, Bob, oh, Bob, Bob said. God, he's, I mean, he took the mud dogs to the bourbon bowl. Uh, number two. Number two. All right. The next one is going to be Joanna Man. Joanna Man, I love you. <laughs> uh, oh, not that great. Number five. Five. He cheated. She cheated. I don't know. Well, they cheated. Uh, you could, 
Well, I, I guess it came out too early because nowadays you could be whatever you want. No, you couldn't, you, want. you couldn't make that movie nowadays. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. All right, the next one is going to be Benny the Jet Rodriguez. Ooh, ooh, not a great athlete because he was just a kid, and you know he was like <laughs> he was just like the best kid. Well, Although he I guess, did become an MLB right, player, right there, right, I guess rate them all in in their own fictional he, universe. He did become an MLB player, and he stole home. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna put him at four. At four? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. The next one is gonna be Joe Cooper. Coop. <sighs> Do you know who that is? Did I get that right? Yeah. Hold on. Can oh, is that from basketball? Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say Coop. Can you <laughs> can you sign my lazy boy, Coop? <laughs> that was my first thought, and I'm glad. Okay. Um, he's got to be number three. He should be five, but three. <laughs> As far as athletes go. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and the last one was a, a last minute audible based on what you said. Now, that's the last one. The last one's going to be Calvin Cambridge. Oh, from like Mike. Yep. Number one. All right. I'm cool with that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we got Calvin Cambridge at one, Bobby Boucher, number two, Joe Cooper, number three, Benny the Jet Rodriguez at four, and Joanna Man at five. I'm not mad at it. Um, <laughs> Joe Cooper. I mean, you know, he, he probably could have gone down a little bit in the list. Um, who who were you gonna say before I said that? Like my comment. Um, I deleted it. I had two. Oh, I had uh, Happy Gilmore and I had Rocky. I would have been happy with either of them. No, yeah. like no pun intended. I would have been happy with either of them <laughs> at number one. So if you, I guess if you if you rate them all within their league. Yes. Joanna Man should be number one. That's a that's a dude dominating a woman's league. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but fair. I'm not mad at it. Yeah. Well, I might watch that movie tonight. Who says Joanna Man I love you? Is that Flavor Flav? Golly. I can see the dude. He's got his like beret on and he's like Joanna Man, I love you. <laughs> I don't think they call that a beret when you wear it for fashion. Yeah. Okay. Well. Uh no, it's Jamie Jamicia Darby. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, like, I love you, Joanna man. I even love though, you, even though you're you're, you're a man. man. <laughs> Does that make me a man? <laughs> also, did did Benny was Benny one of the only ones who didn't throw up on the tilt a whirl? Yeah, if he didn't, then yeah. I don't think they. Because I thought they all did. Yeah, I don't think they show him puking. I could be wrong. I don't know. Hold on. Give me give me that song playing when they're on the tilt a whirl. I don't remember. It's been come so long on, man. That. If I went, da 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 I don't know what the song's called. Tequila. How come we never see Benny getting nauseous puking? Uh-huh. Okay, so he didn't. Correct. Okay. After the kids eat all of the Bertram's tobacco and subsequently puke it all up on the spinny ride, we see all the kids getting nauseous and vomiting except Benny. I always thought that was weird how he was the only one we never see throwing up on the ride when we see everyone else do. He ate it too, so where was his solo? Curling shot. Uh, I don't, his body I don't even remember seeing him with the because they all had that like orange trick down their shirts. Yeah, I don't think they ever showed him with that either. I don't think so. But my favorite line from Benny is, "Yeah, but that really is signed by Babe Ruth." And then James Earl Jones goes, "So is this?" And the rest of the 1952 Yankees, and he's like, "Oh, dude, I haven't seen that movie in so long, and I can quote the fuck out of it. I love that movie, yeah, so much." Okay. Uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, good job. Uh, I'll let you move into your, your ask Reddit. I have like 15 responses for mine because they were all so good. So, Well, I have an ask Reddit for you this week, and that is, David, if you're given $25,000 and a plane ticket to anywhere in the world, but you have to leave tonight, right now, where are you going? How long am I going for? You got twenty five grand. whatever you want to do. You're getting 25 cash plus a plane ticket to wherever you want to go. And I have to leave tonight. This moment. Where okay. are you going? Uh, give me some responses for some. Um, the next nearest airport and then fly back home with my money. Oh, so you have to go to get so the money? Fly from Orlando to Tampa or Tampa to Orlando. Okay. and then Because yeah. part of my thought process was using some of that money to like buy a ticket for mom to come down and watch the baby so i can go somewhere but. you could do that yeah so first response was fly to the closest airport and then fly back home with my money okay 
uh, Bora Bora. Mm, okay. Scotland. Uh, Las Vegas. Roulette. One spin. Red. <laughs> so fly to Vegas. Drop the 25 on red. Fly back home. So that's. I've always had like that internal monologue. Like I'm, I'm going to go to Vegas and just take like 10 grand and put it on a color. Because mm-hmm. that roulette's probably like the best odds you have out of any game there. Mm-hmm. Like you have a fifty percent chance of winning. Okay, okay. I, I'm not mad at that because it's also f- technically free money. So yeah. Well, I mean, just, I, that wouldn't be my answer. I just like that's always been like a. I'm going to do that one day. Uh, maybe kind of lame, but I would fly to South Carolina, watch the sunrise on a beach, and then fly to San Diego to watch the sunset on a beach. Could damn, Jolie, could you do that? Calm down. Could you? <laughs> Could you make that timing? Um, I think so. Oh, it may be easier to go to Florida, somewhere like Daytona Beach for the sunrise, and then rent a car to St. Petersburg for the sunset. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That'd be a much shorter drive between those two cities compared to flying cross country, allowing you time to enjoy both of them a little bit instead of waiting around at airports on a flight most of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Fukuoka, Japan. Fukuoka, Japan. Just an overnight trip for... Um, I don't even know what any of these words are. Um, I'd love to visit Antarctica. Maybe not the best time of the year, but given the opportunity, I would love, I would leave tonight. Um, Thailand, Cuba, drink rum and smoke cigars. Um, Do I have to spend the money? If not the cheapest destination in return. Okay. So that seems to be a common answer. Um, You have to declare. Oh, this is a good one. You have to declare over 10,000 over borders. Better not give me the cash or fly over a border. That's a good one. Like international border. So if you get you get that money. Yeah, that's not bad. Um, To that farm upstate where they sent my dog. She'll be so happy to see me again. (laughs) (laughs) Huh? Oh, Lord. Um, Going to Hawaii, Hawaii. Uh, Poland, I need to take my kids to Auschwitz. I think everyone should see it. Oh, Ooh. Uh, come on. Come on. You get anywhere in the world. Let's go there. Nah, come on. Auschwitz? Auschwitz? Yeah, like that's where you're going to go? Oh, shit. They're starting the fireworks. God damn it. Uh, Venice, so Italy. We, we start in storms over here. Lay down. Japan, Lay down. I can't go anywhere tonight. I'm going to call until tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Japan, Austria, Singapore, Thailand. Any, any reason for those? Uh, let's see. Singapore, 100%. I've also wanted to go there. It's impressive how they've changed that tiny island into what it is today. Thailand for a thing with a ding a <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit. <sighs> uh, Japan, yep. I went there last month. I immediately want to go back. Uh, even Supart immediately wanted me to give the smart ass response of Disney World. In reality, I'd go to Rome. The money wouldn't last long, but God, I'd love it there. At my as at my last vacation, the food was amazing. The people were kind, and the art was gorgeous. Hmm. Um, grabbing my well, girlfriend and going to Iceland because there are no mosquitoes there. Also, it looks nice. There's no mosquitoes in Iceland. It's cold. I mean, so is Maryland. Well, yeah, that's why there's no mosquitoes in the winter. Got gotcha, you right here. Yes, Iceland is one of the few countries in the world that is mosquito-free. Wow. That must be crazy for somebody who's in Iceland and then goes on vacation, and they're like, what the fuck? What? what? What's happening? <laughs> what, what the fuck is this craziness? What are you people living right. in right now? Like, oh, that's pretty cool. And uh, that's my Ask Reddit for you. So what would, what would yours be? Um, With 25K, I would go to... I'd go to the UK. Um, I'd play golf in Ireland on the like right on the on the ocean. I'd go to Scotland and camp out in the in the Highlands. I'd go to England and go see like a soccer match, and then the rest of it I would just drink and like go see historic sites. Would you shit in that ocean? The Atlantic? Yeah. I just thought you had a thing for shitting in big bodies of water. Well, if I was in Ireland and had to do that, I'd be standing on like a 200 foot cliff, like off the green shitting. <laughs> and I might have a chance to also hit a seagull while I did that. Oh, so we're going to the air, the air animals. Mm-hmm. It'd be an air animal on land and got shit on in a different country. I feel like that'd be a natural cycle and I'd automatically win the game. Uh, I, I, I have something to say, but I got to make sure. Okay. So if you shit on a bird, mm-hmm. You could score a condor. 
but what if it's like a baby bird that fell out of its nest and it's just helpless on the ground? I was like, oh, condor coming at you. Well, the point I was, the point I was trying to make is you'd be four under par with such a rare feat. But a condor is also a bird, so you could shit on a condor. Oh, I see what you mean. So we'd be like double entendre thing. Has anyone ever hit a double entendre below par? You could be the first one. It's a big could. <laughs> <laughs> a lot, a lot needs to happen for that I could. I don't even know if condors live there. <laughs> um. Okay. So my answer would be uh, either Australia or Hawaii. Okay. I, I didn't see any Australias, but definitely a lot of Hawaii's. And uh, my reasoning for that is I texted my wife and said, if you could leave and go anywhere in the world tonight, <laughs> where would it be? And those were her answers. Australia for the animals. I can get that for her. And Hawaii just for the destination. Right. Okay. At least she didn't say South Carolina to watch the sunrise. <laughs> yeah. And then and then L.A. to watch the sunset. Yeah. 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 So. <laughs> well, well, speaking of my wife. Um, my ask Reddit mm -hmm. is what's the wildest reason you've ever heard for someone calling off their wedding? I don't think I've ever heard like in real life, anyone saying I'm not going to get married now because of X. No, no, I don't think so. Have you? Uh, yeah, we, we talk about them often. Does he live in a state with a lot of rivers? Um, I don't think so. He lives in a state with a lot of Amish. Oh, did he call off his wedding? Yeah. Oh, I had no idea. <laughs> uh, so what's the wildest reason you've ever heard for someone calling off their wedding? Mm. The groom. They, go, oh, ahead. go ahead. No, you first. Uh, I got a bunch to read. They caught their better half shitting on an animal. I feel like that's a reason to move up the wedding. Ah, okay. All right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know. Sure. All right. So <laughs> I've got the groom and some of his family was arrested by the FBI for running a child abuse material ring. The bride had no idea, but of course called it off immediately. This is in like China or Bangladesh or something. What the it's fuck? Probably in Wisconsin. I don't know. Damn. I have bride was caught in bed with her stepbrother the morning of their wedding. Mm. That tracks. <laughs> the groom got caught getting sucked off by the best man in one of the back rooms. <laughs> I love that face. <laughs> that, that face is thumbnail. What? <laughs> What? Hey, real quick before you get married, do you want to do it again? Yeah. Yeah, right? What the fuck? Uh, a friend of a friend was engaged, but they decided to end it when a fortune teller told her the couple had been siblings in a previous life. Jesus Christ. This is one of my favorites. The man got mauled by a bear during his bachelor party. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to I'm going to have to uh, cancel our plans. <laughs> not not going to make it. Not, <laughs> not going to make it. Uh, we can't find Doug. <laughs> well, we found part of him. Yeah. Jesus. Oh, no. This is black Doug. This is dead Doug. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next one is, I had a regular at one of the bars I worked that claimed she called off her wedding a week before because, and this is, I quote, he ripped an extremely smelly fart while we were in bed, ruined the whole thing for me. That's ridiculous. Because that was happening the, the day after you got married. Were you going to divorce yeah. him? Like, come on. I have. You ready for this one? They okay. turned out to be half siblings from a co-ed professor affair at her university. The affair was found out after a 23andMe DNA test. Holy which shit. Was, which was taken just for fun. Two weeks before the wedding, the university was 1,200 miles away from their small town. Fuck. That is insane Ugh. yeah that's uh he claimed that he had been receiving psychotic visions from his future self according to him these <laughs> visions were warning him that on their wedding day there would be a freak accident involving a runaway llama that would somehow end up destroying the entire reception see if she knew about this then she would have canceled it yes <laughs> that's that's crazy this is another one of my favorites because a fortune cookie nights before the wedding that read a hasty marriage brings regret. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if they met the day before, then okay. Maybe. Yeah. That's, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, taking, taking life advice from a cookie is also a little, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. 
Uh, to come full circle, this is a different one, but my friend decided that he was gay the week of the wedding. He's now decided? married. Decided? He's now married to his best man. What is what is going on? <laughs> uh, I got a couple more. There. Okay. Um, the bride's mom was stabbed. That's that's it. No I mean, other that, context. Just that could just postpone it. You don't gotta. Well, you, you know. I think even postponing, still calling it. Yeah, okay. yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I have my friend's fiance was finally meeting her extended family for the first time shortly after he broke At it the off. Wedding? For the wedding? Oh, 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 before, before the wedding. Before, short, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my friend's fiance was finally meeting her extended family for the first time shortly after he broke it off because she had a first cousin with Down syndrome and didn't want to taint his genetic pool. I hope he's dead. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, uh, two more. My friend's fiance left him because her friend said they were not a good match for each other's horoscopes. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Okay. If that's, uh, you know, hey, you want to live each, your life like to that? To each their own. Good luck. Yeah. Um, last one is bride called it off after she found out the groom was an esports kid. Fuck them. Fuck them. Don't marry them. They're only going to ruin your life and your wallet and your pets. They're going to shit on them. They suck. <laughs> bogey, though. Bogey, bogey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No condors, just bogeys. Fuck them. Bitches. Peace, nerds. My name is Bill, and I got butt fat. So check me out. Bill, 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 butt fat, butt, butt fat. Oh, your bill. Oh, <laughs> hello, Zazel. Oh, that's Jolene. <laughs>